Orca versus Great White. I'll begin this trial by adding three gallons of reverse osmosis water to two pails. My AB test setup pails. The nutrients I'm going to use in this test is the Flora series by General Hydroponics. And the seeds I'm going to be using are buckwheat, peas, and those are winter field peas and daikon radishes. For media, I'll use my trusty perlite. That seems to be uh, working well for me in my Dutch bucket setup, so I'm going to continue using that. The grow cups are just going to be three inch net cups, and I'm going to take some cheesecloth and line those net cups with a cheesecloth, and that's just to keep the perlite from going into the uh, pails and the pumps. For the nutrient mix, I'm going to be using one. Uh, 111 teaspoon per gallon, so 5 milliliters of each, and that's going to go into my pail setup. Both will be exactly the same, and here you can see as I'm testing them, 398 in the 1, and 404 parts per million or 403. I don't think I can do better than that with my current setup. After both solutions are mixed, I'm going to pH both of them so that they're going to be exactly the same, and I think I've got them pretty dang close here. This one looks like it's uh, right around the 6 mark on the left pail. And the right pail is pretty close as well to uh, 6.0 or 6 uh, on the pH. I think that's a good starting point. Here's a look at both of the containers, the Great White and the Orca and the dosing instructions on the back that I will be following. Now this is probably about the only inconsistency between the two, other than that everything else should be pretty much identical. Once I got the cups all filled with perlite, I'll drop my seeds on top and I'll throw a little bit of perlite on top just to kind of cover them up to get them started initially. There's a good look at the seeds from the top view. And I did try to keep them pretty consistent with the amount of seeds. I think I actually counted them out for this experiment. Easier to do when the seeds are big. I'll give the one dusting of great weight on the top and the orca is just gonna get mixed right into the reservoir. All right, nothing to do now, but uh, let this thing get some time to grow and uh, we'll evaluate the results. There is a time lapse that I'll show you here of the growth in the intermediate stages. As you can see, uh, this girl went longer than I typically let a girl go. These plants are huge. The wife actually needed to lift up the lights two times to make sure that the uh, plants didn't grow into the bulbs. Now there's a clear difference here already from the left and the right. I'm hoping it shows up as well on the video as what you can, uh, or what I witnessed. The plants on the right are much greener and there's nothing going on that looks funky with the leaves, but there's definitely something funky going on on the left hand side. You can see quite a bit of yellowing. All of the plants are extremely uniform and very, very close with the exception of uh, the radishes as I'm looking at it here right now. The radishes look like they're much bigger than the radishes in the right hand side pail. But the uh, winter field peas seems to uh, have done a little bit better in the right side. Quality of plant wise right now, I would say the plants in the right pail all seem to have better looking leaves. Uh, structure and strength is pretty dang identical on both sides. A little shout out here to Plant Success. They did actually supply me with the Orca to test with and uh, because I'm already a fan of the Great White which is uh, something I bought for myself. I feel like the first experiment is something that needs to be done with a product that's uh, of the same company just so you guys know that the results are not biased. I really don't care which one wins and I'm happy to switch if Orca is better or Great White's better or vice versa or different brand names from different companies. I'm not really brand loyal at all. I just want what works best for me, period. Okay, so there's a brief overview of uh, the plants on either side. So I think it's time to pull these things out and uh, we'll get a side by side of the plants and uh, you guys can be the judge what you guys think is better. As you can see, there is no shortage of roots in the pail on the right hand side. Everything is kind of a tangled mess. So I'm going to do my best to separate this. Unfortunately, I'm running out of hands here, so uh, I couldn't video all of it. There's no exception on the left side. There's a ton of beautiful roots there as well. 
Now I did scrunch up the ones on the right a little bit more than the left side here, so uh, they're not quite as floofy looking. <laughs> Bonus points for using the word floofy. Uh, anyway, I will say though the radishes on the left pail are noticeably larger than the ones on the right. That is uh, very apparent and you can see that as well in the video here. Do the same with the winter fuel peas. I'll pull those things out and you guys can see the roots. A little bit of discoloration here, but not bad. A part of that's going to be because of the amount of time I think that I was away with uh, this grow. This is very close to four weeks of growth, which is way longer than I typically let this go. Uh, three weeks is kind of the ideal time frame after that. It uh, starts getting really overgrown and the nutrient levels in the pails start depleting pretty good. All right, so the field peas side by side. Definitely more growth on the right hand side, but uh, roots are both in immaculate condition. Probably a little, little bit wider on the right hand side but great plants on both. Now this is something cool on the buckwheat. This actually started to root from everywhere out the side. Now if I go to the other pail, there is none of that going on with this buckwheat. I don't know, I found that very interesting that the one is doing it and the other is not. And the only difference here is that one has orca and one has great white, that's it. So that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what caused that or what the start of that is, if it's a genetic thing. If you do know, leave a comment down below. I'd love to uh, kind of learn some more about that for myself. Both plants side by side are really healthy. There's no difference in the stalks or the uh, roots, root quality. That all looks really good. The only difference I noticed, as mentioned earlier, it's the coloration of the leaves. So we'll get into that in a second. You'll kind of see what what's going on. Both pills are clear. Fluids look good, nothing is stank, and that is awesome. So, a little bit of light sediment at the bottom of both. Now check this out. Now this surprised the absolute berries out of me. The pH in the left pail is way low. Like we're talking, it's probably 4.5, between, it's between the four and the five anyway. That's a very, very low pH. Now the one on the right hand side kept a stable pH of six. So, this has got me thinking a little bit. Okay, so this plain old sucks. The uh, PPM recordings of both the left and right pails, I know I took them, I know I videoed it, but I don't know what I did with the video. I, so I can't give you guys the numbers, I can't give you the video. I can tell you the left side pail had quite a few less, and by quite a few, I know it was over 100 PPM difference or less nutrients than the pail on the right. So whether or not that has any bearing on the uh, pH, I'm wondering if that's the cause of it. So I'm kind of speculating here and I'm not exactly sure of how to benchmark this. Because I let this girl go for as long as I did, this may need some further testing to get a conclusive answer as to which one of these two is better. If there's more nutrients being eaten out of the pail on the left, which is orca by the way, orca is the one on the left and the great white is the pail on the right. If I was doing a better job controlling the pH, would I have got an, a different result? Or does this also tell us that if we had maybe a Kratky method, that we should be looking to great white instead of orca because it's more pH stable? I don't know. Not sure how to quantify this. Let me know which one you guys think is better and why. I'd be kind of curious. Or maybe how I could do this test better to get a more quantifiable result for the next time. Anyway. There's the results, do with it what you will. The next test that's already started in the pails is going to be a master blend versus Foraflex and I'll put that up on the side when that test is complete. And like I say, that one just started yesterday. Uh, today is the 28th, so let's just start on the 27th. This video is gonna go live this Friday. So uh, we'll keep you posted when that one's done. It'll probably be about three, four weeks from now. Uh, also, I haven't forgot about the contest winners. Been a little bit busy. We'll see if we can get that wrapped up in the next video. Till then, take care.